when does no contact start working? You might be trying to start no contact. You might be in the middle of no contact or radio silence, whatever you call it. And you wonder, is it working? I'm going to explain you exactly how it works, why it works and when it works. Jingle. I get my ex back.com. Everyone deserves a second chance. Before, let's get started. It starts taking effect at different times for different people. <laughs> wow, that's a great answer. Well done, Alex. <laughs> I'll explain you a little bit more in detail because obviously this answer doesn't really help you right now. The thing is, it varies from a couple of weeks, a few weeks. I prefer to really have at least 30 days of no contact to a couple of months. In some cases, you need more than one month for your ex. What, what is the criteria, the factor is it depends on when, where their mind is. So what you want to do right now versus what you should do. And it's from experience with my clients, from experience with hundreds of people that helped. What you want to do right now and what you probably did before, you want to move back as quickly as possible. You know, you don't think this breakup should happen. You disagree with the, the decision. You miss the other and therefore you think I need to get back with them as soon as possible. You want to also share how you feel. You want to, you know, there you were very close to your ex and therefore, you know, you feel bad. You want just to express that, you know, I feel bad. I suffer from the decision and I want to share it with you because I think it's going to change your mind by knowing how I suffer right now. You want to tell them how much you love them because if, I, if you tell them how much you love them, maybe they'll reconsider the decision and they feel like, okay, maybe they didn't show enough affection during the relationship but because he told me I love you, then okay, I'm going to reconsider. Or you think, okay, now I really understand what happened. I will, I'm, I've got a plan. I've got a decision tree. Whatever she tells me or he tells me, I'm going to have the answer and I'm going to convince them to get back together. So that's what most people want to do after a breakup. Actually, <laughs> please comment if you, um, if you think you, if you recognize yourself in that situation. Now I'm going to explain you what you should be doing. Not because I'm telling so, it's because <laughs> that's what works in reality. You should take your time and you should shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> okay, that's easy. The <laughs> but you have to really, really respect that. The sooner the better. Because the thing is, as soon as you try to contact them, as soon as you break the radius and you start from scratch. So the sooner the better after the breakup, you have to get in place that the contact radio science. What makes it work? So what makes it work? There's a lot of what. Um, what the relationship was, um, what you went through, um, yourself, your partner, the relationship, the circumstances of what make them break up with you. you know, was it because you cheated on them? Was it because you didn't spend enough time with them? Because you have a boring sex life? Because you, your family was a pain in the ass? Because their family was a pain in the ass? You know, it depends on the, the circumstances. What happened during the, the breakup? So sometimes there's also a factor of if the breakup was nasty, if there was a lot of things that has been said, violence or not violence, but like, you know, a lot of arguments, things that sometimes we regret. We said from their part and from your part also has an impact on how successful the radio science would become. And for how long have you been together? And again, what I tell a lot, my the people I have on the phone is if you've been together for less than six months, well, it's a bit of um, you, you're still in the honeymoon phase. So all my techniques and what I coach my, my clients on really relate to long-term relationship. And I think the longer you are with someone, it's, there's an effect called the, the, the sunk cost effect. It's basically the more you invest in something, the harder it is to let go. Uh, and therefore you can really use that at your advantage. So I have a lot of clients who are about to go to get divorced or their, their partner asking them to divorce. And you can actually play with that, you know, if they have kids, there's a lot at stake here for actually their ex and realizing that they have to let go of every uh, single stuff that they created with their husband or wife. It's very hard to let go so we can play with that. If you're not sure, I'll give you a tip. <laughs> you take the quiz, it takes two minutes, it takes three minutes, it's written, it takes three minutes. The link is in the first comment of the video. And I would basically 
assess based on similar question. I take all those what into account in that quiz and it will basically give you a score and tell you if you have any chance, if you should fight for it, if in for some extent there's no chance, I'll tell you, move on, do something else. And if, um, oh well, I'll let you, I'll let you, I'll let you see, but it's very detailed. You have a detailed report of what you should be doing. And uh, yeah, it takes three minutes. So maybe post the video, click on the link, first comment or in the description, have a look. You populate everything and you get a result right away instead of just wondering all this what. Third, how to get up. Um, so I put a picture of someone uh, trying to build an IKEA chair um, without looking at the manual. So that's the reason is like, just follow the manual, just follow my guidelines. <laughs> okay, we sometimes we are tempted when I, I took this picture because I'm really bad at fixing stuff and building stuff from IKEA because I have this urge of I want to do it myself. I want to be to do it quickly to rush things and Sometimes I end up, um, it ends up making more time because I didn't follow the, the, the user manual. So listen to the user manual, don't fuck it up. How to fuck it up. So responding to contact with lots, lots of negativity. Again, if your ex sees you with negative mood, negative vibes, talking about, um, you know, being depressed, being, even if you feel like it, you don't have to show it because it's not attractive. When they see you sad, when they, you know they bump into you and you're like listening to your music and you're like head down, again it's not attractive. What you have to do right now is to build and create that attractive image of yourself. When you share your feelings with common friends, sometimes we want to open up to our friends. We'll say like I feel really really crap, but the thing is what you don't appreciate when you do that is that they would talk back to their to your ex, thinking there by saying how depressed you are, how sad you are about the, the decision, they will change their mind. But actually, it's going to actually have a massive detrimental impact on your image, i.e. you become, again, less attractive. And when you are passive, when as a result of the breakup, you just sit down. I use this image of sitting in your couch, watching Netflix, watching all the Game of Thrones <laughs> season again and again not working on yourself basically because there's something happened in that breakup there's something you're partially responsible for so use that time to work on yourself when does no contact start affecting them because that's the whole point of no contact is it's affecting your ex in some shape or form when you are not reaching out as expected because radio silence no contact is something that would create a surprise in your ex's mind they would expect you to run after them, to fight for them, to stay in touch with them because they would like for you to stay in touch with them, but you're not offering them this option. So they start projecting a future where you've moved on and they're going to feel the loss. So as soon as they realize, actually, this is real, shit gets real, they're going to have to change their mind and we're going to look afterwards how it works. The thing that, you know, they're not planning weekends, they're not planning things with you you know all these day-to-day -day activities that are no longer there wondering if you found someone potential partner things like that those preoccupation increases the emotional attraction i talk a lot about emotional attraction in my videos this is what makes a next comeback it's the emotional attraction and with radio silence with no contact you create that emotional attraction at the breakup it was very low and anger was very high, with time, things will flip. That anger, those negative emotions that are very strong, very intense, will fade away while the void, the fear of losing you, will create that emotional attraction. And this is what we want. And they'll have an urge to contact you. It's always like that. In all situations, after a breakup, if you do the radio silence properly, they have, your ex will have an urge to contact you. And again, I'm saying that because you've been together. I'm saying that because you were in love together. Uh, you know, if you take the test and, uh, you know, out of the test, I, you, you realize that actually you, 
your partner was not in love with you, you've been together for three months and you were the only one super keen on the relationship, then of course they're gonna move on, they don't wanna have this urge to contact you, but I'm making the assumption that you had a strong relationship with your ex. I'm making the assumption that you were in love, madly in love. There was something strong between you guys. And therefore they won't, it would be very hard for them to let go. Even though they made that decision to break up with you, letting go of those connections, letting go of having you around is really hard. And that will create that urge to contact you. And what would be that urge coming from is the curiosity. You know, not knowing uh, what you're up to is extremely hard for your ex. Curiosity is also, you know, mystery, attraction. They go all, um, all together. And they're going to basically start feeling they made a terrible mistake. Because not seeing you sad, not seeing you complaining, they feel like, what if? The unknown is extremely hard to handle for human beings. It's, you know, it's like change. It's very hard for people to manage uh, those things. So they'll fear that you move on. As we discussed, the tables have been flipped. They were the one taking the decision. I want to break with you. Well, now they don't have any power over you. They're not like, they can't decide whether to get back with you or not because they don't know exactly what you're up to. And it is very hard for them. You basically reclaim that power, regain that power by just taking action and accepting the, the breakup and letting basically alone with that decision, facing that decision. When the table turns, this is when they no longer believe um, you'll ever contact them. So at the beginning, they're like, okay, fine enough. <laughs> he or she doesn't contact me. And then week two, week three, they're like, okay, <laughs> strange. Week four, they're like, fuck, <laughs> it's real. And they'll feel like, oh my God, maybe I screwed up. Because what is very important in your, uh, in your strategy right now is to cast doubt in your ex's mind. As soon as there's a little doubt in your ex's mind, we can work on that. Make sure you don't get back for good. Um, don't be cold or rude when they reach out. It is also a very common mistake that I see um, amongst my uh, clients or, you know, before <laughs> we, we work together is they don't welcome their ex. You know, they are like, okay, I'm doing radio silence and I'm just answering yes, okay, to every message they send me. Well, you have to welcome them at some point because they are making that effort to, they don't want to lose face and they want to make that effort. They're trying to maybe get in touch with you. Of course, they will not come back to you saying like, hey, I love you, let's get back together. It's going to be very small talk at the beginning, which is fine, you have to welcome that. So you remain polite, casual. The thing is also sometimes we just, because we were hurted, we want to hurt them back or we want to share how we felt. However, the thing is when you use that negativity will come across as so very bitter and things that actually you haven't moved on. So you actually basically ruining, not ruining, but damaging all the work you've done, but no contact, showing that you're strong, showing that you actually you're ready to move on. As soon as you show that you're mad at them, well, you actually didn't move on, right? So be very really careful with that, with that attitude. It's very important because the attitude really determines your, your altitude, um, as, as we know. Recap before and next key takeaways at the end. No contact is tough emotionally. I know it's tough because it means letting go but it is the best strategy. No wonder there's a lot of videos about that. No wonder why I advise everyone to do it. But what you, be, what you have to be really mindful of, people make mistakes. And when they make mistake, these two mistakes, they're actually killing most of the chance to get back with their ex. The first mistake is that they can't stay in radio silence. And it's really hard. Um, because they need to cope with that anxiety. The anxiety of actually, they might be gone. Maybe if I don't contact them, they'll forget me. Maybe if I don't send them that love letter, they, they don't understand that I care for them. They don't understand that I'm changing. I want to show them I've, that I've changed. I want to show them that I'm working on myself. There are a lot of people who work with me, you know, we work really hard at, at you know, raising their confidence level, working on their shortcomings. And they really want to share that with the ex as soon, you know, for week one of the coaching. I tell them, no, 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 you have to, to stop because what you're trying to do is to 
cope with that craving and that craving as soon as you send that message you're gonna ruin everything it's a little bit when you binge eat that pot of nutella or whatever as soon as you have binge eaten that stuff you regret five minutes after it's gonna be exactly the same when you send that message to your ex because you're gonna basically send a message expect something from your ex and it might not come in some cases in most cases it doesn't come especially if you do it too soon in the radio silence and i know it's super hard to do it on your own because it's a craving it's emotional it's within your gut and the second mistake is to manage the post no contact uh, phase you're basically either too keen you're so excited it's been a month you haven't had your your chocolate bar for a month and then again you binge it in a way or you're too rude like no i don't eat chocolate anymore i hate chocolate it sucks you know chocolate made me fat um i don't know why i'm using this chocolate image but i think yeah i think it's a good image or you can't articulate how things can work out because at the end of the day what you have to let your ex understand is that actually it can work and I'm your best option if you want to be happy, if you want to have an amazing relationship with someone because A, B, C, D, E, F. Sometimes people are really bad at articulating why they can make it work. Sometimes it's very hard because they have to regain that trust with their ex. Which brings me to a point, very important point. If you're struggling with that right now, let's have a chat. You know, sometimes I have uh, 15 minutes uh, consideration for free in my calendar. I have about 10 per week. And why I'm doing that is because first I want to get to know you, you're watching my video and I'm really grateful for that. But at the end of the day, sometimes we just need a little help. And I know that watching my video is great, but sometimes it's not enough. So have a chat with me, ask all the questions you have about your case, if you're about to go into contact, if your ex is starting to contact you. What should you do? How should I reply? You know, things like that. I'll be more than happy to share my tips. The reason also I do that is because helping people makes me happy <laughs> in a way. So it's a little bit interesting in that sense. So, you know, don't be shy. Click, there's a link in the description. 15 minutes, it's nothing. It can really unstuck you, especially if you are in those two cases. Now, key takeaways. Start no contact immediately after the breakup. It's really important. The timing is really important. Behave as you move on, even if you think you want them back. You really have to behave. Fake it. It doesn't matter. Remain polite, casual when they contact you and be sure to get them back for good. It's just not a one-off. It's just like, let's be friends for good. And you have to prepare for that. You have to work for that. The great thing is breakups are actually an opportunity for you to build stronger couple with the love of your life please do click like if you like the video i'd love to speak with you take care bye